Good day, my name is Angelo. This is Nation's Voice Tower, that channel that keeps you updated on political occurrences in Nigeria and outside Nigeria. Thanks for joining us. Adam, I would like to speak on an issue that has been bothering the political system in Nigeria. What is this? Um, Senator Adam Soshomole and Godwin Obaseki, the governor of Edo State, we are once allies. But today, the relationship is not as strong as it is to be. They are not just political colleagues, but they are very, very close friends. And um, Obaseki played a very, very vital role in the emergence of Oshomole as governor. But today, their relationship has, you know, taking different paths, not as strong as it is to be. Now, I want to really um, unveil to the public what is really the reason behind um, the, you know, the lack of closeness between these two. Okay, so that is the reason why this expose is coming. Because if you don't know what really happened on the ground, the real story that happened on the ground, you may not actually guess the main reason why they are at loggerheads or they have been in controversy over time. So this expose will be all about exposing the real reason behind the controversy between Senator Adam Soshomole and Governor Godwin Obaseki. That is what I'm going to be doing. But there is one big question afterwards. What was the grave sin of Godwin Obaseki? What did Godwin Obaseki really do that makes or made Oshomole hate him so much to the extent of Godwin Obaseki leaving the APC, defecting for the PDP, to the extent of um, Senator Adam Oshomole losing his position as APC leader or APC national chairman? Yes, uh, that position was vacated by um, Adam Oshomole. Why? So we're going to be looking at these things, all right? So we'll be seeing why um, today these two people are not really close and why the Edoset government has actually risen from where it is to be, from grass to the grace where it is now. And the reasons why Edoset has grown from good to better over time under Godwin Obaseki. This is a very, very big secret that has never been revealed to any of them, any of them that are very, any of the political people or political, you know, friends of these people. But this secret has, is embedded between these two people and they don't want to let it out. This is what you're going to be hearing in this expose. If you are conversant with the Nigerian political scene, then you will know about the protracted battle between the erstwhile national chairman of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Comrade Adam Soshomole, who is now a senator of the Federal Republic, and the governor of Edo State, Mr. Godwin Obaseki. The feud, which allegedly cost Adam Soshomole his exalted position in the party and forced Obaseki out of the party. But what is the real cause of the rift? What was actually Obaseki's grave sin? Well, let's delve into the main point. Let's see how it all started. Following Comrade Oshomole's tenure as President of Nigerian Labour Congress in 2007, he had more or less settled into private life when a few Edo professionals who were dissatisfied with the quality of governance and the socio-economic condition of the state reached out to him. They prevailed on the former union leader and dogged fighter to wrest power from the political elite by running for the office of the governor. He accepted. Numbering 20, these well-meaning sons of Edo State mustered up the funds to prosecute the election. They backed the comrade all the way to the Court of Appeal, which on 11th November 2008 upheld the 20th March 2008 judgment of the State Election Petition Tribunal declaring Adam Soshomole the duly elected governor of Edo State. The court deemed that he had polled the highest valid votes in the 14th April 2007 elections. Mr. Godwin Obaseki led that group. When Oshomole assumed office, he understood that a clear vision of the future was necessary to guide the journey of change. So he set up an economy and strategy team, EST, to assist in developing a comprehensive roadmap 
that would ensure a better, more prosperous future for all Edo citizens. And to lead this critical task, he called on Mr. Godwin Obaseki. For seven and a half years, Godwin Obaseki served the state diligently. Let us add here that he did so without requesting a dime, but on basic salaries, just like any other civil servant. Before that time, Edo was actually likened to a rootless ship on a shoreless sea. The privileged ruling class was divorced from the realities of the masses. At best, they saw their office as a means for self-enrichment, and you could feel the people's disillusionment with the machinery of government. But under Adam Soshomole's leadership and Obaseki's guidance, Edo was transformed from a disarticulated political structure to one with a sense of mission. There was indeed renewed hope. It came as no surprise, therefore, that the comrade governor, Adam Soshomole, found in Obaseki a worthy successor. His background as an investment management expert of over 30 years and the experience he garnered as chairman of the EST that was mounted by Adam Soshomole, the governor, had prepared him well for the task of governance. He had a firm grasp of the issues confronting the state and had articulated a clear vision. Edo people concurred and at the September 19, 2016 polls handed him the mandate to lead. Since his inauguration on 12th November 2016, Governor Godwin Obaseki has continued to demonstrate that government can indeed work for the people with policies and programs that benefit the majority rather than a few. He strides across the six focal areas, institutional reform, social welfare enhancement, economic revolution, infrastructural development, environmental sustainability, as well as culture and tourism, are visible for all to see. So, now that we know the history that both men share together and have a clear picture of happenings in the state, what grievous offense did Obaseki Godwin commit? To have made him an outcast in a party on whose platform he emerged governor, which further made him defect to the People's Democratic Party. From all the comrade and his loyalists in the APC have said in public, nothing remotely suggests that Governor Obaseki has failed in his duties as the chief executive officer. That would not be consistent with the glaring record of achievement. The only coherent tune from the cacophony of voices is the lack of patronage from the governor and that says a lot about the values of our leaders. Obaseki's grave sin, it seems, is putting the interests of Edo people before those of entitled politicians, his refusal to channel public funds into private pockets. That is the paradox of the Nigerian society. It goes against the principles of democratic governance which, as American civic activist Nick Hanoa puts it, is to maximize the inclusion of the many to create prosperity, not to enable the few to accumulate money. Indeed, the loyalty of elected public officials should be to the people, not self-acclaimed godfathers. Governor Baseki has modeled this over the last three years, and Edo people are the better for it. In reality, the fight is not about the person of Godwin Obaseki. It is a struggle for the heart and soul of Edo people. Political buccaneers led by a former comrade in arms who has morphed into the same imperious figure he once fought against are laying claim to the state's treasury. But don't forget, power lies therefore in the hands of the people and only the people can determine their fates. Okay, um, that is evident. Godwin Obaseki... Is now the governor trying to finish his tenure. Adam Soshomole is a senator representing a federal constituency or district in the state. They are actually working together for the betterment of the state, right? Yeah, so I, I hope you understood and you now know why they have been at loggerheads or their relationship has been soured over time. Well, I I would not hope for it to be fixed because I doubt if that kind of relationship can be fixed forever. 
He is not a member of the PDP or Shomali is a member of the APC. So there will be issues even if they come to fix their controversies because both parties don't belong to each other. Though both parties are opposition parties. Yes, so um, that is that. Now, um, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party in the February 25th presidential elections, Peter Gregory Obi, has given a simple but powerful remark using the government of Bola Ahmed Tenobu to illustrate a grave level of corruption that is taking place. Peter Obi made this remark at an event recently. Please stay tuned for Peter Gregory Obi. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, Your Excellency, I, dear Governor, please mind is just a remark, Your Excellency, I, dear Governor, and my dear brother, Professor Charles Saludo, Your Excellency, and our own dear mother, we have spoken so well that all we can do today is to go back and reflect on that your wonderful speech. And I thank my dear elder brother for inviting you. Mine is a simple remark which will not take more than two, three minutes. And it's to thank you most sincerely for the honor of coming to Nigeria for this wonderful lecture. Excellency, Excellency, my contribution, my little contribution to your speech, is that the problem of Africa, problem of Nigeria, rests clearly on leadership. It is bad leadership that is the problem of Africa. It has nothing to do with colonialism. We are colonized years ago. Today, it is African leaders that have turned Africa into a giant criminal enterprise. And I'll give you an example. Let me use this university. Let me use this university to give you an example of the problem we face in our country. This university, if you are employed here, you work hard for several years to be a professor. And if you are a professor in this university, your salary is 400,000 naira. And if they pay you without spending your money for 30 years, your salary will amount to 144 million, which is not up to what we used to buy a car for a legislator in Nigeria. That is the problem of Nigeria. That is the problem of Nigeria. That is number one. Number two, this university where you are, this university where you are, the overhead they give to the vice chancellor from federal government of Nigeria is about 10 million naira. So in one year, they will get about 120 million naira. They have they have five for over 500 professors. Over 4,000 lecturers, over 40,000 students, they get 10 million naira, 120 million naira MBA. So five of universities like this will get about 600 million naira annually, which if you convert to dollar today, is about 500,000 naira. That is what we use to go to a meeting of United Nations for one week. It's unacceptable. That is the problem of Nigeria. That is the problem of Africa. We can afford to do that with less than 10%. So it's squarely on our distance. So I thank you for being part of this crusade. I'm sure our governor, every other person, we are part of this crusade. We must dismantle this criminality. All right. Um, he made his point clear. People were applauding him. This is not this is somebody who does not just speak but he speaks in action. All right, people have seen him walk in Anambra State, and um, people actually wanted to give him the mandate or gave him the mandate 
of the Nigerian people, but he 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 will have a grip on it because of um, the heinous activities of INEC and the unpatriotic activities of Bola Ahmed Tinobu. Hence the reason why Peter will be narrowly missed the presidential seat. Right? But that would not stop him from pointing out the issues in governance because that is what he really uh, you know, stands out for. He picks out the errors and then fixes them. Mr. Error Fixer. That's what I call it. He fixes all the errors in governance. And um, not that he's perfect, but he tries his best to the best of his ability. We have seen this over time. His track records show for it. We have not seen any fraud case linked to Peter Obi yet. So all of us are actually applauding that man who has been a politician during the last two decades of the country and is still pure. Finally, the Nigerian military have been warned not to meddle into external affairs. This happened recently at an event. The Chief of Defense Intelligence Annual Conference 2023, the Minister of Defense, Mohammed Badaru Abubakar, asked the Nigerian army to respect the principle of sovereignty, equality, and non-interference in the internal affairs of other nations, as well as other um, words of um, admonition that he gave them. Charge for the of small arms and light weapons are encouraged and sustained by forest borders. Thus, there must be a regional institutional design for collective security and lasting peace in West Africa in particular and Africa in general. Particularly, we must reckon with the current trend of coups and counter coups in Africa, which tend, which, which tend, of weaken, which tend to weaken us individually and collectively, thereby increasing our vulnerability. It is indeed necessary for us to accelerate global and regional collaboration to, to effectively protect our citizens and ensure peace across the region. Therefore, any country's defense strategy to, for any country's defense strategy to succeed, it must recognize the critical role of diplomacy in reducing military risks as well as fostering shared understanding for enhanced national security. Our defense advisors and attaches must aim at providing sustainable solutions through defense uh, diplomacy anchored on better information sharing system. As we all know, the world has become a community, sharing its both positive and negative effects on political, religious, and socio-economic issues. As countries continue to evolve ways to effectively use the defense attache system in solving problems, Nigeria must also raise the occasion and lead the way in those efforts. In doing so, I must urge you to respect the principle of sovereignty, equality, and non-interference in internal affairs of other nations. You must emphasize cooperation rather than competition and act within the confines of the law. Always advocate for international peace and security, honoring equality, mature respect, peaceful coexistence, and manage differences. It is through those, through this, that regional collaboration can be realized for enhanced national security. Defense advisors and attache must continue to play the indispensable role of acting as Nigerian officers for Nigeria, facilitate, facilitate joint training and exercises where lessons can be learned and best practice, practices adopted, and above all, sustain relationships to ensure peace and prosperity. Therefore, it is my sincere hope that this session in this conference will highlight further ways through which Nigeria can leverage defense diplomacy and regional collaboration in enhancing national security. I'm glad that this conference offers a unique opportunity to assess the role of defense attaches and advisors in tackling security threats and create newer frontiers for greater solutions. Finally, I charge the participants in this conference to utilize this opportunity to, to energize their resolve to serve our country better in our various capacities. We must pay attention to the global and regional challenges as diplomats and continue to positively represent the DIA the Minister of Defense and Nigeria in general. 
I am confident that the aim of this conference will be optimally realized. On this note, I thereby congratulate you for holding it this good, and I wish you all happy deliberations. Thank you. Yeah, pieces of advice there, millions of pieces of advice from the Minister of Defense, Muhammad Badaru Abubakar. He has said what needs to be said and is left for the Nigerian army under the tutelage of Taufit Lagbaja to do the needful and um, not meddle into internal affairs of other countries. But there are other things that they need to do to look into without even being told. Insecurity is taking the biggest stage in the country right now and the security outfits, especially the Nigerian army, should be called out for it. We can't have lots of kidnappings going on and lots of wanton killings going on in the country and we have security outfits that are actually dreaded among security outfits in the world. So why will the Nigerian army be there and things will go wrong? Well, we will um, put our eyes to the ground to see what this administration will do, especially security-wise. Please, before I go, I would love to urge you to please share this video to all the platforms you know, all social media platforms. Don't also forget to watch till the end. Please do well to drop a comment for us in the comment section. And if you're watching me for the first time, subscribe to this channel and also tap the notification bell so that when this channel drops a new video, you'll be able to see uh, that we have dropped a new video. Finally, please like this video. If you don't like them, we wouldn't get those reactions we want. See you next time. Bye.